Hello and welcome back to Vintage Disney here on Brian Sings That Are Cool. When a little movie called Animal House came out, every studio wanted their own raunchy college comedy. After Walt's death, Disney was willing to try anything, and it just seemed like the right time for the House of Mouse to take on beer brand product placement, a drunk college guy jumping into a vat of beer, and even boob jokes. That's right, boob jokes. I'm so glad that Disney never lowered itself to childish boob jokes ever again. I Nice movie, Trent. Well, let me introduce you, Mr. Jenny Blake, Mr. W.C. Fields. Oh, charm, my dear. Doubly charm. Except for those two. Oh, great. Now they have me doing it. Anyway, this is Midnight Madness from 1980. Michael Nankin and David Wetcher were lifelong friends and were both enrolled in film school. Michael at UCLA and David at USC. In 1978, after scrounging together $25,000, they made a short film titled Junior High School. The short, a musical about kids in junior high, was a massive hit and swept film festival awards. They gained a fan in Ron Miller, the son-in-law of Walt Disney and then current executive producer at the Walt Disney Studios. Ron snapped the two young filmmakers up and gave them money, offices, and six months to come up with Disney's next live-action comedy. The movie they came up with was The All-Night Treasure Hunt, a wild comedy about a group of college kids on a scavenger hunt. The film ended up being retitled as Midnight Madness to avoid confusion with a Clavon Little film from the previous year, Scavenger Hunt, which coincidentally also had Stephen First in it. It's the second Disney film to have a PG rating after the black hole, and Disney even tried to hide its involvement in the picture. So what kind of movie are we in for? The movie opens as various kids around a college campus are given flyers telling them to show up in an apartment that night. Here we meet Leon. This whole thing was put together by Leon. The guy everyone knows, all the girls love, and is always scheming and has lots of money. None of this is really explained, except it's Leon. When Leon gets everyone together, he tells them that they're going to take part in a scavenger hunt, with only a trophy as the prize. At first, like any normal person would do, they turn the whole thing down. But one by one, they all decide to go for it. Along the way, they meet a couple of future stars, including Michael J. Fox in his very first role, and even Paul Rubens, a year before his hilarious 1981 HBO special, Live at the Roxy, that introduced the world to Pee Wee Herman. Other familiar faces show up as well, like Eugene from Greece, Eddie Deason, presumably before he took to throwing things at police officers and robbing nursing homes. Yeah. American Werewolf in London's David Naughton, fresh off of the I'm a Pepper, Dr. Pepper commercials, and his top ten hit, Making It, and one of two actors in the film, playing brothers no less, to later play werewolves. And Dirk Blocker, son of Bonanza star Dan Blocker. The movie also stars Animal House alum Stephen First, who seemingly starts the film trading his role of flounder for the gross-out shenanigans of Belushi's Bluto, but First quickly proves to be the film's villain. Like any great 80s movie, it's not for the overly sensitive. Nobody is safe from ridicule. Fat people, ugly people, old people, even religion. And of course, we all get the great stereotypes and tropes that these have to offer. The jocks, the nerds, the cute couple we all hope get together at the end, and they do. It's all there, and chock full of weird character actors. If you're an eagle-eyed film fan, you may pick out a few of the locations throughout the film as well. As both a James Dean and Rocketeer fan myself, I was excited to see an entire scene shot at the Griffith Park Observatory. 
The out of control diner scene was shot at Johnny's Coffee Shop, where the dude and Walter grab a bite in the Big Lebowski. And then there's all the stuff shot at Disney's own studio. You may recognize the neighborhood from early Disney films such as The Shaggy Dog and The Computer Wore Tennis Shoes, the latter of which, like Midnight Madness, used the animation buildings as a stand-in for a college campus. If only they named the college in Midnight Madness Medfield as well. Come on, there's no reason why Midnight Madness can't be in the same universe as the Absent Minor Professor, the Misadventures of Merle and Jones, or the Computer War Tennis Shoes trilogy. In the subgenre of college teen comedies, I think that if it didn't come under the Disney banner, it very well could be right up there with Porky's or Hollywood Nights. Though at the time, the film lost the Disney Company $4.5 million for the 2004 DVD release, Disney finally officially associated their name with the film. If you're in the mood for early 80s nostalgia, from the fashion to arcades, and a slightly cleaner teen comedy than most, Midnight Madness is a little Disney oddity that deserves another look. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed my look at Midnight Madness. If you want to be kept up to date as to when I release a new video, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And if you really want to be notified, hit that bell as well. I'm Brian, and I'll see you next time.